I think it's a tragedy when you're trying to do a performance art and pretend you're somebody that you're not, trying to make things that you don't like. I think that's the real tragedy. I think that's a real waste of time. We hear a lot about the 99% of screenplays written today are quote unquote horrible. What's been your experience with screenplays that you've read? Yeah, I don't think that like that many are like just total trash. I think that like for me, when I look at it as somebody to either like represent a writer or produce a project, that it it's not like something is the it's not, it complete completely not on the level. It's more does it align with my taste? So I'm not being shocked by the the bad scripts I'm reading, and maybe I'm not being exposed to really bad ones. But for whatever ends up on my to-do list to read, it typically is actually pretty good. There's never been anything where you were surprised that someone would submit something that wasn't finished? Well, I tend to not just take on submissions that the email doesn't prick my interest. I mean, I have to see a logline of something that makes me want to read it. And if it's presented professionally in the email, or I get a script from a trusted contact, or like a cover fly, or I find something on Blacklist, and it, it's got good feedback on it, it's probably pretty good. Like it's not, there isn't a incredible deviation from what I'll imagine it to be, to what it is, and, the, and how horrible it is. What I rarely find is writing that gets me in the, in the mindset of, oh my God, this is something that I have to get involved with. That's the, the difference. It's not about, wow, it's all, it's all bad. It's more of like, what's gonna make me care more? Because I do have to look at all my other responsibilities. What, what's gonna make me wanna like open up space in my mental bandwidth and on my schedule to really get behind a project? That's what we're talking about. But it's not like I'm seeing so many bad writers and maybe through my filter systems, because I'm engaged with a network, maybe I'm just not seeing those. What do you think 99% of screenplays get wrong? I don't know what they get wrong because I don't know the ratio of scripts that I like. And then at a certain point, it's also a tasting because there are perfectly talented writers that will find managers uh, that have different tastes than mine or I might find a writer that some other manager doesn't like. So I can't say in like a, as a number, in a sense that this percentage won't, won't get it. I could just say that it's just my sensibilities and those things, those, those things are just like subjective and they guide my curation. So I can't tell writers to write exactly in the, in the way that I connect with because that's their voice and that's how they want to write. So if there's something that I fall in love with, that's great, but it's just the stars aligning. So it's more of an organic uh, type of thing that I have as a, as a manager where I'm like, wow, this is really special and this is what I want to watch on TV or I want to see in the theater. And that's more of that subjective taste than it is that there's just all these bad writers making mistakes. It's in the same way, like I, at home, I have unlimited options uh, to stream practically. What am I choosing to watch? Like that's more of a reflective of the sense of, are these, do I connect with these writers or not? Is what would I actually sit back and watch? What am I gonna, what am I gonna enjoy? on the weekend. So, but I don't want to like speak to all these writers and say, look, you're all messing up as much as I have certain tastes that defines my, uh, my business. Can you explain meta to me? The, the sense that there is a, like, if you think about, I don't know, uh, Deadpool, there is a, a commentary on the superhero uh, genre within 
his you know his his performances uh, his jokes the the character is constantly commenting on the the type of world that he occupies or if you look at like scream the characters in some ways are commenting on the slasher genre so i mean that's my uh, i guess you know take on what meta could be i'm sure there's ways to deconstruct that or explore that concept but that's what initially comes to mind do you think that's more prevalent now i do think that was definitely a movement in the horror genre and the with scream i think scream was definitely uh, an approach but it's a device so i mean i'm sure it's used across genres currently but it's hard to like say if it's an exact wave that is starting to become dominant or it's picking up or it's just part of the you know the culture and we're just kind of experiencing it off and on but it's not like there's all these meta creators that are just driving you know this movement i don't know how does a writer know they're too late to a genre like they're catching it when it's on its way down and it's been done too much and they think that it's a wave they want to ride but the waves are already about to crash. I think that like there's a pastiche that sometimes is popular and it's hard to really like have a handle on it exactly, but you just feel it. It's not an intellectual thing. You feel certain things like an ebb and flow of an approach, you know? But I don't think anything ever dies. I think it's just find another way into um into the minds of of creators and audiences and maybe it's not the trending idea but it still exists i mean if you think about fashion you'll see fashion resurface all the time i mean everything's 90s now it's all you know yeah stonewash it's all about that you yeah, know it's and, a good thing we saved the jackets yeah exactly <laughs> so you know 90s never died it's just there's just a it's always be ebbs and flows of ideas and identities and and types of characters and stories we see but i don't think that anyone's too late to the party i think the problem sometimes is that the 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 messaging to some script writers is is done almost like it's a, like a tech startup where it's just like here's the space we got to occupy it oh no this is crowded or you know and it's this very business and very pragmatic uh, mindset that you apply to potentially another field but i think that like as a writer you should write what you love and how much you align it with like being pragmatic that's up to you or your reps but i i do think getting too caught up in the the stock market or the trending of what entrepreneurs are selling this it starts changing the mindset of um the creative process and it's very hard to write a script so if you're looking at like deadline hollywood or variety or any of those things and you're like i gotta write this or write that i think that starts to become you're becoming more reactive and i think that to really develop your voice and really build out your your, your portfolio it's almost like you got to exert yourself onto the world and take up space and kind of push your ideas forward versus just, you know, counter punching uh because you're just dealing with things coming at you and I think with that mentality, you know, maybe you do make some money but you may not feel like you really own it and you may not feel really like it's yours and I think it's way better to stick to what you actually care about like if you really love campy, you know, rom-coms or whatever it is and you know all about them you should write to that you should write to what you love because then you know it on a more specific level you should write what you care about or else it's just like a weird you know weird game and then it's more then you're playing the business of it but that's not going to inspire people because you're not doing something that you're feeling you're doing something that you're thinking you're thinking that is everybody loves x or but i think you need to be able to be comfortable with the risk when you become a writer 
that when you write a script, you might not sell it and that's fine. And there's no, there's no shame in writing things that don't sell. They might become a sample, but you don't want to be constantly being informed by trends or thought leaders and all that. You just want to write about things that you, that are on your mind that you can't get out of your mind, you know, and there might be a movie that you saw when you're younger and that that movie is a movie that like inspired you to get into a game and you want to write to that, but it's passe. You should still write to it because that's what's getting you to write. It's your, every time you're in the game and you're creating something, you're learning. It's kind of like, if you think about it, like if you're a martial artist, you're not precious when you work on your, your discipline, you're just constantly perfecting it, perfecting it. Or if you're a chef, you're perfecting your cooking. And it's not like this is the best cheesecake ever that will end all cheesecakes and I can never do another one and that is it. No, you're just doing it and keep doing it and learning and learning and learning. And at a certain point, it may not be the projects that you think are gonna be the ones that sell. Maybe it's further out that you've worked, 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 and then something locks in because you're not trying to protect your time so much. You're, you're more learning because you're making yourself better. And as you get better and better, you're better for yourself just to generate alone. And you're also a better collaborator because you can articulate your thesis for, uh, for what you're working on. And then they connect with that, who you're working with and just build it out. So I think that it's not about protecting your, your your time by choosing some get rich quick scheme over talking about themes, talking about trauma that you've experienced or commenting on the types of you know TV shows you grow up on, those things should just drive you and should be your compass. That should always get you back to what makes you excited and just keep going back there and go back there and not look at it as like a cause and effect. Like I do this, I get that, you know? Because that's the problem is that there's all these ideas of schemes and I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna make it work. There's so many professions that take a lifetime to learn and, and they are accepted. You know, to be a lawyer, you don't just become a lawyer, you don't get like a certificate in the mail and suddenly you're just a lawyer after like a, a week of studying law. It's these things take time. So I think the key is taking the pressure off your shoulders and just accepting yourself, accepting what you love and accepting what makes you different and just making anything, even if it's just an iPhone video or something you shoot on like on TikTok, it doesn't matter. Or you writing tweets or you write short stories. It's just getting immersed in what you love and learning and trying to find friends that share the same you know, sensibilities and rinse and repeat and not thinking like I need a manager or I need an agent or I need this. No, you just need the platform that allows you to learn and sharpen your, your perspective. And if you do these things, you become more valuable because then you become a specialist. You gotta be okay with the most competitive quality of any storyteller is you gotta be more me than anybody else. So that's what I'm saying. It's not to say I wanna be the best writer or I wanna be the best director. I, no, I wanna be more me. And I wanna feed those needs that I have to obsess over the directors that I fell in love with, the whatever is a comic creator or the musicians. And if you live in that space, you start picking up valuable skills. You start refining that way to speak. Now, when they say voice, it's like a signature. What is your voice? But they also say voice because you listen to my voice. You can hear what I'm trying to say. You're connecting with me, you're communicating. And it takes time, but then you communicate and it connects. If you see like your favorite TV shows and movies and everything, you're not looking at the low light reel of the creators, you're looking at the headlines. 
Do you know there's a low light reel to almost anybody? We don't always look cool. The richest people don't always look cool. The most successful artists don't always look cool. You're not seeing them fuck around making stuff that nobody cares about. We only see when it just, everything just kind of clicks and then suddenly they're like, amazing and that's a problem with like the 30 under 30 or this and that is this obsession with time we got to get here before this happens or we got to sell this project because time's running out we have time until you're dead you have time so you should focus on becoming the most you version as a creator and then if time goes by and somehow that manifests into making all this money and being the, you know, looking awesome, that's fine. Or you don't become successful. You just became obsessed with what you love. And I don't think that's a tragedy either. I think it's a tragedy when you're trying to do a performance art and pretend you're somebody that you're not, trying to make things that you don't like. I think that's the real tragedy. I think that's a real waste of time.